My name is David Cage. I'm the writer and director of Indigo Prophecy. I just thought there's a few things you should know before you get started. I'd like you to meet my friend Bob. You'll be controlling him while you're learning. Let's begin with something simple. Move toward the mark on the floor. Perfect. Now you know how to move about. You're also going to have to be able to observe your environment. To do so, you'll have direct control of the cameras. Come on, give it a try. You can also look around you and see exactly what you want to see. But you won't be just looking around you in Indigo Prophecy. You'll also have to interact with your environment. Go to the door. Do you see the symbol at the top of the screen? It indicates the movement you have to make to execute the action. Do it s That's cool. Now that you know how to move about, use the cameras and interact with the environment, we can move on to more serious stuff. Indigo Prophecy has action sequences where your character's life will be in danger. I'd better explain this to you before you find yourself on your own. When this symbol appears at the top of the screen, it means your character is gonna have to make a physical effort. You'll see, you'll be exhausted too. Hey, not bad! Now for something a bit more difficult. You're gonna find yourself facing all kinds of dangers in Indigo Prophecy. You're gonna need a cool head and good reflexes if you want to survive. Let's see how it works. That's what can happen if you don't have good reflexes. Try again. Okay, I see you've got the hang of it. Now we can move on to something else. You can also choose what you want to say in the dialogues in Indigo Prophecy. Let's give it a try. Um, what do you think of my friend Bob? Hey Bob, did you hear that? Right, I see you've got the hang of the dialogues. In Indigo Prophecy, you'll only have a limited amount of time to make up your mind. So you'd better think fast. 
Now, let's talk about your mental health. In the Indigo Prophecy, your actions modify the psychological state of your character. Each time it changes, the symbol will appear on screen. Take care of your character, otherwise you may fall into depression, madness, or even commit suicide. Oh, I nearly forgot something important. In Indigo Prophecy, you'll be able to control all the main characters. Be careful. Your every action will have consequences for the story. A word of advice, think before you act. That's it. I've told you everything I know, or nearly everything. There are still lots of things to discover, but I'll leave you the surprise of finding them for yourself. Now it's up to you to play. And be careful, you're entering a world where anything can happen. Things are never quite what they seem. We think we understand the world around us, but we really only see the outside, what it seems to be. I used to be just like you. I believed in humanity, the newspapers, soap commercials, politics, and history books. But one day, the world kicks you in the teeth, and you don't have any choice but to see things the way they really are. My name is Lucas Kane. My story is the one where an ordinary guy has something extraordinary happen to him. Maybe it was supposed to happen. Maybe it was my destiny or my karma or whatever. I know one thing for sure. Nothing's ever going to be the same again. It all started right here. Where else could it happen? New York, capital of the universe. The chessboard destiny chose for the last big game. I was just another pawn living my pawn's life. Until that night, when my life descended into chaos.
What? What, what have I done? I, I didn't want... It was like a dream. Quick. I, I've, I've got to get out of here before somebody comes in here. Out of order. Out of order. Out of order. Empty. bleeding. I must have cut my wrist with a knife. Both of my forearms are cut too. Nobody goes anywhere. A crime has just been committed. I'm going to have to ask you to stay calm and wait here for the police to arrive and check your IDs. And that's how my story ends. The police found blood on my clothes and arrested me. So I'll be spending the rest of my days rotting in some prison somewhere. I'll never find out exactly what happened. That cold night in January in the toilet of that restaurant. Because as far as everyone else is concerned, I'm just another killer. Thank <laughs>
barred up. I can't get out this way. I'm bleeding. I must have cut my wrist with a knife. Both of my forearms are cut, too. this neighborhood before the police get here. Nobody goes anywhere. A crime has just been committed. I'm going to have to ask you to stay calm and wait here for the police to arrive and check your IDs. Diner. That's it. Why do they always wait for me to go on duty before they start killing each other in the middle of the night? Tyler, somebody gets murdered every day in New York. But especially when I'm on night duty. It's as if every psycho in the city has it in for me. If you want a bitch, do it inside. That way I don't have to freeze to death listening to it. <laughs> You're the boss, Carla. In five years on the force, I've seen some murders, but you never really get used to death. You just learn to live with it, that's all. I still don't know if it was fatigue, or cold, or something else, but I clearly remember the bad feeling I got when I walked into that restaurant, as if some part of me already knew that this time, something was different. How's it going, McCarthy? Evening, Inspector. I've been waiting for you. Hey, Tyler. Hey, Martin. So, what happened? Homicide. I found the body in the toilets. I had to go before I went home. Did anybody notice anything strange? No, nobody saw anything. Do we have a suspect? A client left just before I found the body. Who is the victim? His name was, uh... John Winston, a regular here at the restaurant. Kate knew him. She could tell you more. What were you doing here? Were you on duty? I wasn't. I just happened to be here when the murder happened. I like to come by here after work. Kate's coffee is the best in the East End. Which table was the suspect sitting at? Oh, he was sitting at that table over there. Is that the waitress over there? Yeah, Kate Morrison. I think that you should interrogate her. If you don't mind me saying, go easy on her, Inspector. She's still in a state of shock. Thanks for your help, Martin. It's late. I think you can go home and get some sleep. I'm gonna wait until you're finished with Kate, if you don't mind. I want to make sure she gets home okay.
Tyler, can you shut that thing off? We're on a murder site here. Hey, I just thought I'd chill the atmosphere a little. Okay, it's off. I better turn this off before Carla pops a vein. Hey, Martin, you know where I can find some coffee? The machine's behind the bar. Just go help yourself. Martin, you are the man. You look hammered, Tyler. Yeah, this is my third night on call in a row. You know me, man. If I don't get my beauty sleep, it's zombie city. Eh, uh, you should be out of here pretty soon now. You don't know Carla. She's capable of keeping everybody up till breakfast. And she is by far the most stubborn girl I ever met. It's pretty funny seeing you on the job at this hour, Tyler. What, you fall out of bed? Yeah, don't make me laugh, Garrett. My lips are chapped. Kate? I'm Inspector Carla Valenti. I'm in charge of the investigation here. Would you mind answering a few questions? No. Go ahead. Have you been working here long, Kate? It'll be 11 years next month. I've seen all sorts in this place. Down and outers, junkies, you name it. The till's been robbed a few times, but murder? That's a new one. Johnny was such a nice guy. Did you know the victim well? John was a regular. He came every Monday. He always ordered the same thing and I left a nice tip. Could anyone else have come in? No, I don't think so. You can only get in the front door. If somebody else had come in, I would have seen them. What was the man doing before the murder happened? He was there for a while. He was reading, I think. Was John here alone? Did he speak with anyone? John always came alone. We chatted a bit. The weather, his job, the usual stuff. He never talked to anybody else. Did you get the impression that John and the suspect knew each other? No, I don't think they did know each other. The man had already been here a while when John came in. They didn't talk to each other. No, I'm, I'm almost certain that John didn't know him. What happened before the murder? Did you notice anything unusual? No, it was just a night like any other. Did you hear anything while John was in the toilets? sound of a struggle or yelling? No, I didn't notice anything. Can you tell me what you saw? There weren't that many people tonight. It's usually pretty calm during the week. I was just chatting with Martin at the bar. I didn't even see John get up. Oh my God. You have to try to be strong, Kate. I know that this has been a shock for you, but you're the only one who can help us find the suspect. 
my shift was almost over. I was just chatting with Martin at the bar. John got up and went to the restroom. The man must have followed him. And then he must have snuck out afterwards because I didn't even see him leave. What happened next? Martin went to the restroom and that's when he found John. Did you happen to notice anything strange about the suspect's behavior before he went into the restroom? No. You yeah, wait. Yes. I remember something. I came back at one point just to check whether he needed anything. He didn't answer me. He just stared straight ahead. It was weird. I didn't push it. I thought maybe this guy is a little crazy. God. If I had only known. Do you think that you would recognize the suspect? I'll never forget that face. Perfect. Do you think that you could come down to the station tomorrow and help us construct a likeness of the killer? Yeah. I'll do whatever you think I can to help catch him. Thank you very much for your help, Kate. I hope you find the bastard who did it. People like that just don't deserve to live. I promise you, we'll do everything in our power to find him. Go home now and try to get some sleep. Martin will make sure you get home okay. Night. Huh. Here's his fork, but where's the knife? Well, well, the coffee's not on the bill. If this is his, it's a pretty weird book for a killer to be reading. Garrett, there's a book under this table. Why don't you take it out for prints? You got it, Carla. A cup of coffee and a soft drink? That's weird. He's a caffeine addict, or else he wasn't alone. Tyler, I'm gonna take a look outside. Good evening, sir. Whoa! <laughs> hey, uh, babe. <laughs> what can I do for you? Someone was killed in that restaurant tonight. Did you happen to see anything, or anyone unusual? Did I see something? Uh, I don't see nothing. I mind my own business. Cold enough for you? Yeah, well, luckily I got this to keep me warm. <laughs> you want a little splash? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go. Try to get someplace warm. Take care of yourself. <sighs> the door only opens from the inside.
several wounds on the left side of the chest and the area of the heart. They appear to be knife wounds. Blood on the mob. The killer must have used it to clean up the mess. Why would he risk getting caught to do that? Why is there blood here? Did you find anything? Possibly. I don't understand why there would be blood here. Maybe it belongs to the victim. Not likely. Get Garrett to analyze it. Then we'll know for sure. No trace of a struggle. A table knife covered in blood. Obviously the murder weapon. Can we use his silverware to stab his victim? That would seem to indicate that the murder wasn't premeditated. Tyler, I want you to verify that Garrett has lifted the prints off this knife handle. Have him check out the blood on the blade as well. Okay. Man, stab some dude in the toilet? You gotta be crazy. This guy took a big risk. Anybody could have walked in here and surprised him. Bizarre. What? Well, he still has his credit card and a hundred bucks in cash on it. I guess the killer wasn't after his money. Do you know if anyone has contacted the family? Not as far as I know. Oh, right. I get it. I'll take care of it. Tyler! What? This is a restroom, isn't it? No. This is a crime scene. It's cool. I'm done. Must be all that coffee I've been drinking to try and stay awake. You ready to go, Tyler? I think I've seen everything I need to see. Are you sure? We can take another look around if you want. Yeah, you're right. Let's take another look around before we go. Did you find anything, Tyler? <sighs> well, that, I'd have to be able to keep my eyes open. Keep up the good work, Tyler. You ready to go, Tyler? I think I've seen everything I need to see. Are you sure? We can take another look around if you want. No, we're good. Let's head home. Okay, let's bust. It's time to get back to the car. I'm dead tired.